Developers could stop coding pretty soon as AI takes over for them. Now, this is something that came from the Amazon Cloud Chief that tells employees that developers, they're going to stop coding. That Here's what it, here's my takeaway. This is my takeaway. All right, here, here, here's what we're going to think about. This is not uh, saying that we're going to have less developers. In fact, I think we're going to have an increase in developers. You're just going to change the way you code. Instead of keystroke by keystroke, you're going to get a Photoshop style of code painting where you paint large brushes and you go in and make fine detail adjustments. That's what we're going to see. And we're going to need even more developers because it's even easier to do the drive these paintbrush style applications to write more code and to manage code, maintain code, grow code, reduce code debt, improve code quality. All of these are paintbrush tools or some approaches, right? You can imagine that each of those uh, initiatives are different kinds of paintbrushes, right? We know unit test uh, paintbrush, uh, uh, code documentation paintbrush. There's a whole bunch of different kinds of paintbrushes we could use. This is the kind of development we're gonna see. Now I'm just in assuming this is kind of what the Amazon Cloud Chief is is entitling with what is being described just in the header of this article. We're kind of just walking through this article, the whole, well, let's just go over the major bullet points. So AWS CEO uh, Matt Garman shared thoughts on AI during an international fireside chat in June. Business Insider obtained recording of the meeting. Oh, <laughs> all right, I wonder how that happened. Uh, Garman's comments were a kind of advisory nudge rather than a dire warning. Advisory nudge, this still tells me that, hey, this is coming. You're going to have to learn how to use these new kinds of paintbrushes. And developers who are able to wield these tools are going to be more sought after because they can be more productive. Sooner than you think, developers are going to have to start developing their skill sets to adhere to artificial intelligence tools. These tools are uh, able to write code a lot faster than you ever could it, if you've you know, tried it. It just sp sprints out code. Now, of course, all code written, whether by another human or another developer or yourself, you still have to reread it and audit that code. This is something that a software engineer does all day long. You read a lot of code. This still needs to happen. This is why I think that these artificial tools will help just accelerate in terms of the code authorship. Sure, though, we still need to audit the code. This is why we're going to need more developers going forward. This is something that uh, Matt Garman's describing that according to, well, Matt Garman is the CEO of AWS for S3, AW, uh, EC2, uh, SNS, these cloud service technology. You get to buy computer hardware. We don't actually buy it. You lease it from Amazon. You get to rent it just for a little bit. They actually uh, rent on, a, I believe, they round up to the first minute, but then they charge you per second after, or they charge you per minute for the amount of hardware that you've leased from them. It's a pretty good model. I like it. It's pre uh, pretty fair. So they're saying that, uh, Matt Garman's saying, software engineers may develop the, they have to develop your skills soon as artificial intelligence takes over as many coding tasks. This was all discussed in a topic during an internal, fi internal fireside chat held June, according to the recording of the meeting obtained by Business Insider. Uh, if you go forward 24 months from now or some amount of time, oh, that's, come on. Stick with the 24 months, that's two years. Uh, I can't exactly predict where, sure. It's possible that most developers are not coding. You're not going to be, well, you're still coding in an essence. Instead of typing every character one by one on the keyboard, you're going to sort of, you know, describe what you're trying to achieve and AIs will output it. Uh, this is, okay, so Garmin's saying coding is just a kind of like the language, like we talk with computers. Oh yeah, sure, okay. It's not necessarily the skill in itself. Yeah, I mean, there is some memorization involved with coding. This, you don't need to do that as much. So that part of the coding isn't necessarily needed. You just need to be able to read the code, understand what it's doing and validate the output, which you do with any other human anyway. Uh, the skill in hand and itself is like, how do I innovate? How do I go and build something that's interesting for my end users to use? That is a big part of the skill, you know, a lot more in terms of product management from that perspective. So you don't necessarily need to have good coding skills to build a good user experience. And yes, so that does mean that jobs for software developers is gonna change. Yes, it already kind of is. You're already kind of expected to use these AI tools right now, even though they're not as helpful sometimes if you don't know how to wield them because we haven't yet innovated on these tools to be able to be as good 
based on the kind of input provided by developers. Here's the story that I hear all the time. I tried it out. It gave me something terrible as an output and I don't trust it anymore. Yes, exactly. You got bad output because you gave it bad input. And this is a skill on its own is being able to leverage these tools is currently a challenge and you have to get good at it. If you're getting bad output is because you're not good at it yet. The good news is the tools are gonna get better and are gonna acclimate to your bad input and they're gonna give you better output over time, that's gonna to optimize to where almost anyone can do this. And then that's where you have to adjust your skills. Do it sooner than later. So this is Garmin says, it just means that each of us has to get more in tune with what our customers need and what the actual end thing is that we are going to try to go and build because that is going to be more and more of what work is as opposed to sitting down and actually writing the code. That's right. So we will need to be able to provide these good user experiences in terms of how to uh, just understand how users are going to consume the product that you're building. And then instead of writing the code, you know, long, every keystroke, you'll use these AIs to generate the code. Good news. If you're a software developer, there's no dire warning that AI is going to take over your job anytime soon. The good news is from that perspective, you still have to learn how to use these tools. And here's my anticipation. We're here. Check this out in the future. We are still going to need developers more than we have now to drive these tools and be able to provide really good user experiences. That's the kind of job that's still needed and all code written still needs to be audited by a human and managed. So that is still going to be a coding. Instead of writing the code most of the time with our keyboard, now we're going to be reading the code. We're going to be a lot more heavily on the read side than the write side. That is the new role, the new job. If you really liked writing code, you still get to kind of do that because it is a fun skill. It's fun to do. It really is. It's a lot of fun to sit down and write code. And especially if you know all the algorithms and everything to achieve your exact goal, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, you know, guess what? That fun's going to be taken away because the AIs can do it a lot faster than you can. And even though they're not as good as you, they're good enough. It's already good enough. So what we're going to want to do is let's actually just walk through this uh, portion of the article here from Business Insider. There's no dire warning. Talk of AI changing and even eliminating jobs has intensified lately as companies have been laying off employees or stop hiring to shift resources towards AI development. That's been happening. It's true. We've been seeing this and new AI tools that automatically generate code. Uh, can help companies do more with the same number of engineers or fewer of these pricey employees. That is the current understanding in the industry is that you need fewer software engineers because these code generators automatically generate code. Well, here's the fallacy in that in general. Most of your time isn't really spent writing. As a software engineer, most of your time is spent reading code, learning how to approach technical problems and how to provide good foundational uh, technology for whatever the business is needing to deliver the product to the customers. That's still required. AIs don't really necessarily do that. They can write a lot of code really quickly, sure, but throughout the day, you only spend about 10% of your time actually typing it out. If you're getting rid of 10% of the day, you still need the majority of your employees to be able to audit the code, read the code, validate, optimize, and drive these AIs. So you can't really get rid of a lot of, actually we'll need more engineers going forward. And then it does say that AWS laid off hundreds of employees earlier this year. Uh, specifically to focus more on AI. And it says here in Garmin's case, Garmin, the CEO of AWS, Amazon Waste Web Services, he was sharing advice rather than issuing a dire warning that developers will go extinct because of AI. Here's the deal. It, the, no, it's straight up. No, that's not happening. AI is going to be a required skill that you must have and you must got to be good at it. You, We still need the expertise of human developers, software engineers to drive these AIs, audit the code. So this all has to happen. That it, We're gonna need more engineers going forward, not less. So uh, Garmin's tone was optimistic, suggesting that more creative opportunities for developers. Sure, okay, yes, that's, a, that's what I'm thinking too. He said AWS was more helping employees continuing to upskill and learn about new technologies, increase their productivity with the help of AI. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So just like when the spreadsheet application was developed for computers, we saw 400,000 desk jobs gone. Uh, these before, before we had the spreadsheets uh, on the computers, you had giant desks that were actual spreadsheets and you had 
calculators, uh, human calculators go through and hand write on these spreadsheets. We lost uh, almost half a million jobs to the spreadsheet on the computer. But check this out, over 600,000 jobs uh, were filled to become spreadsheet developers. Instead, because now more businesses could automate that usually slow process that took weeks and weeks, now took near moments in a computer to take care of, and we saw an increase in number of jobs. So this is what we're also gonna see here as well. Now the AI allows you to code more easily, guess what? We're gonna see an increase in number of jobs because we can, uh, it's, it's easier access essentially, right? So being a developer in 2025 may be different than what it was in 2020. We're already seeing that right now. I mean, it's 2023, uh, so we're at the end of 2023. Guess what? Uh, that's only two more years away and it's gonna be a lot more ubiquitous. If you haven't learned the AI tools yet, and you've been in a scenario where you have had bad experiences with the AI, that just means you're not good at the tool yet. You can get good at the tool, and you can get really good outputs and outcomes if you get good at it. Good news is, though, the tools are gonna to get better to your bad input. <laughs> they will be able to generate more closely to what you're intending, and their understanding will get better and better. Everyone's a programmer now. Yeah, that's right, even you, are, if, if you if you weren't a programmer before, you are now with the AI. You can ask it to write anything you want. It was, it'll print code that you can run. You essentially just generate, you, you're a programmer. You, uh, you were able to generate code that achieved your goal that makes you a programmer. That's what the CEO of NVIDIA described, that with because of these AI coding assistants, you are now a software developer. In essence, Microsoft CEO Satya Nadala also said the same thing. It has a speculated that earlier and easier access to AI technologies will create one billion developers. <laughs> Yeah, essentially, right? Everyone who has access to these AI generative tools essentially has become a developer. Obviously, as a software engineer, you do still need to be able to read this code and audit it if you're in a business and that's your role as a software developer. You're still gonna need to audit the code that is printed out uh, before you inject it into the business product line. Good news is, though, that we're seeing pretty good outputs from these from the AIs these days. Um, and then we even see it, st stability AI, AI is describing, they predict that no programmers in five years. No, well, here, it's gonna be different. You still need software engineers. We're not gonna be typing as much. You won't need to type every keystroke. You still must code and you still need to understand what the code is and you need to audit the code. We still do these practices even with pull requests on GitHub where you need a secondary human, a secondary engineer to audit the code of the first engineer who wrote the code in the first place. It's called peer uh, code reviews, sort of an auditing process. This has to happen and you can't escape that. You still need that with these AIs. Uh, so that is something that is uh, going to be mandatory. Um, in a new AI workflow, uh, Garmin described, who's the CEO of AWS, employees need to find new ways to incorporate AI into their workflow. Garmin says a lot of times we think about customers, which is great, but we also encourage everybody to internally think about how you are just completely changing what you're doing. You have to kind of step back from that quote and sort of understand how the role of a software developer is going to be changing if you're a software engineer or you're looking to graduate and become a software engineer uh, you will change your role instead of just being really good at typing text into a text editor you need to be able to better understand more uh, shift up in the chain directly interacting with your customers and providing a really good customer experience you might be shifting upward the product management chain and providing better experiences that you would then translate to the AI and then read the code, audit the code, and deploy the code. So that seems like that's where that role, where's, this is where it's gonna morph. That's how it's morphing forward in the next few years. We're gonna see that change. And then after that, I don't, where is it gonna go after that? I mean, it's gonna continue down that path. So we're gonna see less and less needing to actually keystroke your keyboard into an IDE. You'll still use an IDE, that's, you will. It, it, you just have that. It'll be like Photoshop now. <laughs> the, it'd be really easy to uh, just sort of print code in larger paint strokes. That's, what, that's kind of what we'll be seeing.